I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasandaram, Consultant Neonatologist. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for keeping the notifications on. And uh, thank you for sharing as well. So continuing with the NRP series, I would like to thank you all for the great response. And I think uh, the further videos will be useful as well. So today we will be discussing a very important aspect. We discussed in the previous video about the ventilation corrective steps. And here we will be discussing about use of the TP's device and bag mask for ventilation. So the actual devices that we deliver ventilation with. So by the algorithm, we have to initiate positive pressure ventilation when the heart rate is less than 100 beats per minute. The baby has no respiratory effort or only has gasping breathing. Effective ventilation is key. And as I mentioned, please review the previous video on Mr. Sopa as to how we have to take ventilation corrective measures. We have different devices for positive pressure ventilation. The most commonly used are the TP's uh, device or the New York as many people are familiar with and the bag mask device is mainly the self-inflating bag. So this is the TP's device and it's nothing but uh, pressure uh, controlling tool. We have the peep valve at the tip so you can either have the New York or an equivalent with the manometer and the peep valve at the end and you need a mask uh, of the appropriate size because the seal is very important. This is the equivalent of the pop-off valve in the self-inflating bag where you set the upper limit of the pressure and you have to set up the unit before use. You set it up at 8 to 10 liters of flow as we will discuss next. The main reason that the TP's devices have become very popular is the main advantages. You have a good control over both the positive inspiratory pressure, the peak inspiratory pressure or PIP and the positive end expiratory pressure or PEEP. There is ability to administer effective PEEP in contrast to the self-inflating bag. There is ability to deliver CPAP as well by the same mechanism if you are not occluding the TP's but you are just holding a good seal of the mask over the face the peep valve will deliver the CPAP to the baby. And uh, there is ab ability to control the inspiratory time. When you are occluding the TPs, the longer you occlude, the longer the inspiratory time. There is more consistent delivery with multiple users as long as you train them in getting a good seal with the mask uh, because the pressure is delivered by the setup. It can deliver free flow gas at the set FAO2 as well. So if, uh, if you are holding against the face with the peep valve it will deliver the CPAP if you hold a little up from the face without a seal it will deliver the free flow of the gas at the FAO2 that you have set. The disadvantage of the TPs is that it needs a continuous gas source and uh, ideally in the current city we should have a blender as well. In the resuscitation scenario where there is a uh, change in the lung complaints rapidly like the baby is born with fluid in the lungs, the lung is stiff, you may need to adjust the pressure quickly. There is less flexibility, you need experience, you need the thought to think that you need to increase the pressure and that's why the Mr. Sofa is uh, ingrained in us. There is need for more training and unless there is a good mask seal, you are not able to compensate for the leak. In the bag, for example, we can compensate for the leak by squeezing a little more or a little harder with the leak compensated. But in the TP's device, if the seal is not good, you won't be delivering the appropriate pressure. So. Set up at a flow of 8 to 10 liters per minute, but remember that any further adjustments in flow should be avoided. The pressure delivered will depend on the flow that is set. So, if you have set it up at 8 to 10 liters, stick with that. Very rarely you change it where the other measures at increasing the pressure have not worked, and you may need to keep a higher flow to open the lungs in a very stiff lung situation. But that should be with senior supervision only. So, normally we start with 20 to 25 centimeter of water pip. Uh, and 5 peep for preterm babies. The FAO2 for preterm babies, as we discussed in the video on labor room oxygen management, is usually 30% for babies under 30 weeks and 21% for those over 32 weeks. And you can titrate based on the saturation. In a term baby, you start with 25 centimeter of water peep and 5 centimeter peep, and FAO2 is usually room air. Uh, of course, if you need chest compression, you will change to 100% for both term and preterm babies. If you need a pressure increase as part of your Mr. Sopa, you increase in steps of 5 cm water during resuscitation if needing the pressure increase. So remember that uh, setting the upper limit of PIP will uh, only need uh, 
uh, increasing in rare cases and it's usually set at 35 to 40 centimeter the area that's hidden by the knob in the neopuff but be familiar with your unit practice as to what this pressure is and consider slightly prolonged inspiration or right time for initial breaths if the chest rise is less so the innerless stresses on inflation breaths in the beginning and uh, that's one of the reasons that your lung is stiff and you may need a long right time in NRP, experienced users may try to prolong the inspiration as well. So the mask is very important for any appropriate ventilation and it should be of appropriate size, preferably translucent, rimmed and it can be round or anatomic masks. The preterm masks are usually 35 to 50 millimeter outer diameter and it's size 0 and size 1 which is 50 to 65 millimeter outer diameter for the term babies. Of course, companies have come out with multiple a range of mask sizes which includes extreme preterm babies as well so if your unit has different mask sizes select the most appropriate one for that uh, baby you are using and in terms of the self-inflating bag which is the second important tool we use for ventilation you have examples any of these uh, around the 200 to 300 ml uh, capacity of the bag we have different valves the expiratory valve uh, the peep valve we have the air inlet and pressure release valves and the air inlet one way valve and the oxygen reservoir socket. These are all parts and when someone is uh, reusing these bags, you should assemble them the proper way, always test it before use. The pop-off valve, as I mentioned earlier, is a safety device. It's usually set at 35 to 40 centimeter of water and uh, the reservoir bag we will discuss next. So the oxygen delivery with the self-inflating bag varies depending on the setup. If you have no oxygen connected which is the simple bag neither of these are connected uh, then you have just room air being delivered that is the main advantage that you don't need a gas flow to use a self inflating bag and in majority of the situations now we initiate resuscitation with room air and you can have the oxygen tube connected but you don't need to have the gas flow on if you turn the gas flow at 8 to 10 liters then you'll deliver 40 percent oxygen so that is the next step you can do Suppose your resuscitation with room air isn't working, you go up to 40% oxygen, don't use a reservoir bag in that situation. So it's advantageous to have no reservoir bag in the beginning of resuscitation, just connect the oxygen but don't turn on the flow. And if your baby needs uh, oxygen titrating, you turn on the flow. If the baby needs chest compression, you need to go for 100% oxygen. So in that case of central inflating bag, you uh, start the oxygen at 8 to 10 liters, have the reservoir bag attached and you will be delivering around 90% oxygen. So the advantages of the self inflating bag is more people are familiar with its use because it has been in existence for a long time. It's relatively simple to use. You can uh, uh, have the gas supply if you have but if you don't have a gas supply there is no need to panic and uh, room air is what we all start with so you can always start with the self inflating bag. It's very useful for transport as well that you don't need a gas flow for it because the chances of failing is there. You should have more flexibility with pressure and volume delivery in case of the stiff lung, in case of self-inflating bag. An experienced user can use it well. Um, manometer attached can still give the PIP reading so you are having the reasonable option. The disadvantage is that the PIP delivery is not routine. It needs a special valve attached. It's not routinely available. And the pressure monitoring is also not routinely available so the pressure delivery depends on the user. Inspiratory time is also not controlled. If the bag is a small bag you cannot really give a prolonged inflation time. The risk of value and barotrauma is high because as I said the bag is 200 to 300 ml and if you squeeze it deep it will deliver a much higher tidal volume than the baby needs. Of course part of it is offset by the leak but still uh, there you can cause significant value trauma. Barrow trauma, if you squeeze the bag too hard or if you use all your fingers to squeeze, then you may cause a higher pressure delivery. The sharper you squeeze, the higher the pressure. So when we talk of uh, Mr. Sopa and the pressure increase, we mean a sharper squeeze on the bag. So the pressure is uh, based on how quickly you compress and the volume is based on how deep you compress. The, there is less flexibility with oxygen options, though we can manage as we discussed earlier and most units prefer the TP's device for the above reasons. In terms of uh, self-inflating bag, we should ensure it's assembled correctly and always test before its use. Check if the pop-off valve is working appropriately. There are very rare situations where you may need to briefly override the pop-off valve by occluding it 
uh, don't put a tape over it to occlude it because it's very dangerous you should occlude it by your finger only for a few breaths to open up the lungs if needed uh, till you tide over a crisis for example uh, when the lung has collapsed so this should be by experienced users in extreme situations for the briefest possible time and anesthesia bag i'm not going into detail because most of the uh, nicu nurses or neonatal uh, neonatal unit team do not use it it's used more by the anesthetists it needs greater expertise to use these bags because the valve control determines how much pressure and gas flow and uh, it can deliver free flow oxygen you can have a good control on the pressure the pip and peep and the inspiratory times and it needs a continuous gas flow the oxygen can be adjusted as well so almost all the advantages of the tps device is available with the uh, anesthesia bag as well except that it needs uh, more regulation of the valve so it's used by experts to summarize the device that we use depends on the unit preference most units prefer the tps and the neopuff uh, i'm using the word neopuff it's I'm not endorsing any brand though self inflating bag should be available for equipment and gas supply failure as well as for transport remember not to over ventilate and you observe the chest rise and use just adequate pressure to ensure the adequate rise and remember not to overdo ventilation as well so an important way to remember the ventilation rate when you are not doing chest compression is to use the cadence breathe two three breathe two three breathe two three as you uh, bag so that for uh, every breath uh, there is a reasonable gap you are aiming at 40 to 60 breaths per minute so i hope it's useful uh, the series will continue do subscribe and turn on notifications and uh, do share with your colleagues and uh, thank you all for your kind support in sharing so far